morning all and thank you for joining us for the webinar on importance of training for first time managers. I'm Pura Marwaha from People Matters and will take you through the agenda for today's webinar. Yes. We have the privilege of having with us Dr. Rajshree Jogan Putra, Senior Learning Consultant at Nolscape. A little about today's webinar. Training first time managers effectively may mean that an organization saves several large costs in the long run and the importance attached to the first time managers is not without reason. This webinar will discuss how important it is to train first time manager for an organization point of view and how an organization can efficiently and effectively do so. This webinar session will cover the following five important questions for first time managers. Why should you focus on your first time manager? What are the benefits of focusing on first time manager? What are the competencies that are critical for the first time manager? How is a good first time manager program designed? And what are its key features? What impact does the first time manager program have? A little about our today's speaker. Dr. Rajshri Jogan Putra is a senior learning consultant at Nolscape. With a doctorate in philosophy from the Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay, Dr. Rajshree Jovan Putra brings with her over 15 years of experience in teaching, consulting, facilitating, and research. Prior to her role as senior learning consultant at Northscape, she was a senior practice consultant at Tata Management Training Center, Pune. Her areas of spe specialization consist of work ethics, critical thinking, experience-based learning, facilitation effectiveness, and personal development. Our partner for today's webinar for helping us make this program possible is Northscape, which is an award-winning immersive gamification and simulation software company focusing on talent transformation. Using experiential learning products, Northscape helps organizations attract, grow, and retain talent. We have saved time for you to ask your questions at the end of the webinar. For those watching the live webinar, you can submit your questions at any time during the presentation through the question and answer section. We will try to respond to as many questions as time allows. We have a full exciting agenda for the webinar today. So without any further delay, I'm going to hand over the webinar microphone to Rajshri. Over to you, Rajshri. Yeah, thank you, Purva, and uh, good morning to all of you. And uh, just give me uh, about 10 to 15 seconds so I, I can assign the privileges required to the participants if there is. Okay, so as of now, uh, we will uh, have this uh, session on developing the first time manager, as Purva pointed out. And I will take you through some of the questions, trying to answer the ones which were raised. and. Uh, Whenever you have a question, I'm hoping that you will, uh, without hesitation, raise it out. So I'm uh, able to see. Uh, no, I'm not able to see. So, okay. So for now, let us start. And I will uh, begin this session with uh, citing some of the agendas, though it has been rightly pointed out by Purva. As of now, I have. Uh, these four key session objectives that I would like to highlight. First is we want to quickly understand the challenges that are faced by FTMs because without this, it is impossible to even address what kind of interventions we need to make. That is one. Uh, two, we would be focusing on a model which is, I'm sure some of you might be familiar, it is the competency-centered training intervention for FTMs specifically. Uh, three, I would also want to highlight the benefits of focusing on FTMs and the kind of interventions that you would want to make for them. So like all of us, as all rational human beings want, you always need a reason for understanding why you should do what you should do. So that is going to be uh, my third objective. And third, I would want to appraise uh, the kind of impact a competency-centered FTM training intervention would have. Uh, this is so because uh, there are other approaches as well, but uh, what are the specific benefits of a competency-based uh, training program? 
So these are my broad over uh, broad objectives that I would be taking you through. But for now, I just want to have a quick sense of uh, uh, you know an activity out here. So you may want to keep your hands on your uh, keyboard. And on the chat, I would expect your uh, answer. So I'm going to display sentences one after the other, and you have to tell me whether they are true or false. So the first part, which I want to quickly uh, work on, is profiling. So I want to be uh, clear that we are all on the same page with regards to how we are viewing the first time manager out here. Great. So on your keyboard now, and here is my first question. Is it true or false? Can you give me in your chat, all of you? So now my activity is on, and uh, all participants on your keyboard right now is uh, one first one out here. True, okay. Archer says true, true. Vidya also says true. Great. Let's uh, see if it is true. Yes, it is. Let's move to the next one and see if this as well is something true or false. Very quickly, 10 seconds for this one. Okay, Asil, you are the only one. <laughs> I want to see others as well. Okay, Faz, you are also saying false. Uh, okay. May or may not. Yes, but I like that very context-specific answers. It is false, but like Vidya also mentions, it could be true, could not be true, in the sense that if uh, the, the, the range of people reporting to this one person could be from anywhere from 1 to 30. So good job, Kunal, thank you. Next one, very quickly, is this true or false? Quickly, false, Ati says it's false. Saez also says it's false. Okay, let's see. Any one more person? Yes, Amit says true, Kunal says true, okay. Yes, it is true. Typically, most of the people reporting to them, first-time managers, would not have a management responsibility. Very well done. Okay, let's move to the next one. Ten seconds for this one, and let's see who gives me the first answer and the right answer. Okay, true, true. Subramaniam also says true. Vidya says true. Fair says, Amit says true. Yes. That is true indeed. Let's go to the next one. Monitor that people complete their tasks and achieve set targets. True or false? Think very, very uh, deeply on this one. True? Okay, true. <laughs> okay, true. Let me see if it is true or false. Uh, according to me and most of the literature that you will come across, it is false simply because they just do not monitor people to complete their tasks. They also guide and nurture their direct reports. So this is an incomplete statement and therefore false. So I caught you there. Okay, so that's why I said him deeply. Let's move to the next one. Okay. True or false? Not responsible for either writing staff reports or deciding who is going to get the bonus. True or false? False. Yes, Subramaniam says it's true, so I have two contradicting uh, answers here. Give me one more so I know I have a tiebreaker here. Okay, we just says it's true. <laughs> Great. Yes, it's false. It's very clear. They are responsible for writing their staff reports, and also they are partly. Yes, Archul, I give it to you completely. It's ambiguous. Sometimes they are responsible for at least the second part. The first one, yes, they're definitely responsible for writing uh, staff reports. In, in a sense, it is what we are talking about in terms of appraisals. Okay, second last one, almost. So they know everyone's job inside out, true or false? False, false. Most of you are saying false. Okay, let me get one more. Amit is also saying false. Well, oh, this is a unanimous verdict, is it? It is true. There as yes, Manu Sharma, you are right. <laughs> this is a job which requires you to be very clear about people's roles and objectives. You as a person are supposed to, as a first-time manager, has to have all this clarity with regard to roles and objectives of the concerned reporting. So, last one, 
requires to make bigger and more responsible decision much sooner in their career is absolutely right manisharma yes okay so very well this also has yes yes to i can see everybody but then i'm seeing only familiar people giving the answers i'm not seeing others uh giving the answers so here it is yes very much true so very well done and uh, vidyan says you are being very consistent in replying and giving the right answers so that is true so what we are seeing over here is that has been a kind of transition that is happening so what do we mean when the transition mean the transition is happening is earlier and many of us probably might have heard that there was this whole uh, the whole habit where the first time manager would be mostly interested in telling people what to do and monitoring their progress but as of now with the new gen y occupying your workplace and your workforce uh, most of them are gen y we are what is we are also seeing that they have to deal with many other people management issues like discipline how to influence one another uh, managing conflict motivating coaching and all those kinds not just that they are also responsible for being the link between what is seeing your managers and the staff reporting to them so here what we are seeing is that they have to move as even what the animation is showing that there has been a transition in terms of what they used to do earlier and how their roles have changed now it is far broader and far more interesting for some of course so this is the transition that has happened however many of us uh, since we are into the business of training and uh, meeting these kind of individuals we have seen that while the delight is there the the, the, the entire situation is also nightmarish for some of them but some of them delight others feel it's a nightmare some of us feel uh, first time managers what we have understood is that they since the transition from a purely technical job to now doing a functional role uh, sorry to now a managerial role there is this transition which is somewhere in one way unclear to them what is expected of them moving forward uh they are often promoted and expected of course to you know manage teams finances performance and most of them of what we understand has very little skills or support given to them so that is another challenge that they face and because of which they might not be as enthusiastic as they would have started off their new role with next and most important again is a, a nightmare for many of them is because they feel that they are not trained many of their leadership and management skills which they operate with are very innate and therefore limited because of which you know they might really not know are they on the right track or not doing the right thing as well most often yes uh, when being promoted we look at their uh, mostly their uh, degrees and their uh, certification but very honestly most of these fdms feel that it is an inadequate way of you know transitioning to a new role certificates and uh, you know degrees may be the starting point but not necessarily the required skill that they have to transition to the new role so the big uh, challenge across all of these uh, fdms which i have seen is a uh, couple of them which i have listed again i want you to play a similar game and i hope uh, many of you who are already there uh, uh, would just think up with my thought uh, is this true uh, is is this something the first statement appearing to you something which you would agree with can you give me some kind of an indication which is are you agreeing with this or not can you give me a chat response please anybody yes says is also saying hemant also yes hemant i'm seeing you for the first time okay do you agree yes so uh, this is typical where they are being an individual contributor and now suddenly they are not just an individual contributor uh, but yes they are looking after a team and becoming a first time manager could be one of the biggest challenge in terms of handling team from being an individual contributor now here's the second one for you would you agree or disagree working under a brighter spotlight and of increased expectation and scrutiny absolutely thanks vidya this is also one of the greatest uh, sense where suddenly the spotlight is on all on you and you are now responsible for uh, you know just doing the right thing all the time so great 
third one out here would you agree for this one accepting responsibility for the quality and quantity of work yes jyoti thank you uh this is exactly another issue where uh, a challenge is now they are suddenly responsible for not just their own but everybody else is as well quantity and quality as well the fourth one is this also a challenge yes true good so this is also one of the challenges that they face this one i don't know if many of you would agree for this one but i'm putting it it's a uh, now here you are supposed to balance everybody's expectation on the one side yes you have your senior manager and at the same time you have your direct thanks manu and fazal uh, fazal sorry uh, this is something which is also one of the greatest challenges that an fkm would face one more team self motivated dealing effectively absolutely <laughs> who would deny this this is something which comes very very frequently uh, and it is associated with the first time managers because it's a huge transition and uh, therefore it is one of the greatest challenges they face the last one yes the last one yes absolutely thanks manu consistently you have answered says and jyoti for giving me the answers and keeping this uh, dialogue uh, active uh, absolutely this is one of the requirements because they might have the functional keys they might have the domain keys but the interpersonal skills the softer skills is something which probably would be the most important at that point in time to deal with whatever is happening so very well i am thoroughly pleased and like i always tell people reward of good work is more work so thank you for that lovely participation i will once again need your uh, uh, inputs as we move forward so keep that spirit and uh, uh, keep me also uh, you know uh, al alive in this session so very great so the question therefore is so now we have understood what your profile is we have understood what are some of the challenges that they they are facing so what is it as uh, people in the lnd section in the hr uh, people who are responsible for taking care of the training and uh, development needs of our fdms what is it that we can do here is a proposal which is from my end and this is something which uh, we are uh, greatly uh, advocating and that is that we need to have something which is called a competency based program intervention for these fdms now what is this competency based approach and what should it involve is something which i will uh, delve in for uh, a couple of minutes as of now so a competency based approach as you can see has three major uh, characteristics one the focus is always on the outcome here we are only in looking at a measure where we are seeing whether or not a particular person is able to demonstrate that competence so here when you are mapping people's progress we are mapping them whether or not they are demonstrating whether they are performing and because of which you know you will probably say yes this person is you know progressing and therefore this is a good way of Uh, developing them or if you see that the person is not demonstrating then you know what other interventions are required second one in a competency based approach we are looking at knowledge application versus knowledge acquisition this is very very clearly uh, self evident and the sec the third most important part over here in a competency based approach we are looking at facilitator and participant it is a relationship and an equation between individuals it's a conjunction it is not something like a banking concept you know where you are uh, you know the other one does, just doesn't know anything and you are feeding that person with all that required knowledge skills and you know attitudes for performing a particular job so here you will see there is a transition from you know facilitator to participant instead now we are saying it is facilitated and participant the equation is that of co creation and uh, co collaboration rather than you know i am the giver and you are the receiver kind of thing so but why are we saying all this uh, we are saying all this because we have this whole idea that there is a particular effect if you want to take care of an effectiveness of such a competency based program 
then you need to keep in mind the following characteristics. Obviously, this is a, a logical first step. Uh, you need to plan your intervention by identifying uh, clearly what competences would be required by your FTMs. Given the nature of jobs that they are into, uh, functional will anyways be taken care of, but definitely there are core competencies. With relation to how they develop leadership skills is something which you need to identify. In our experiences, we have seen that most of these competencies, most of the organizations have a clear-cut document around it. So I think this is one hygiene check which is taken care of. The next one, most important, which we would also mention over here, is incorporating adult learning principles. Uh, whether you are aware or not, I'm not sure, but there is a great amount of literature around which people have identified that adults do learn differently than do children. So there is a kind of requirement that is uh, that needs to be heeded to, and that is adult learning principles are always part of such an FTA program. That is one requirement. And second, last, uh, sorry, the last one over here, definitely the, the kind of intervention that you are planning, it has to be engaging, experiential, and most importantly, you have to create a conducive learning environment wherein any kind of trial and error is not held on to them, that they are free to experiment, they are free to make mistakes, and that is still okay. And that kind of an environment needs to be made available to them. So this is what we are looking at, a competency-based approach where competencies are clearly identified, adult learning principles are in place, and there is an element of engagement and experience, you know, embedded within any of these kind of programs that you would be looking at. Uh, you may uh, draft one on your own, you may go to another person and a consultant, but at any given point in time, you have to ensure that these elements are part of your training program. So uh, here is what are uh, competencies. So now I'm moving out, giving you uh, a kind of, uh, you know, an experiment that has already been done. So this is what I have as a suggestion. But uh, before I go for a suggestion, I want to get, again, in your chat box, could you think of some of the competencies you think would be very relevant for an FTM, given the challenges that we have? Uh, I would request all participants to give me at least one or two. Two would be good. And let us see that what we have come up with and what you are already thinking is, uh, you know, uh, perfectly aligned. So let us see, uh, I probably will spend about uh, a minute's time in gathering those uh, competencies from you. Can you think of some competencies? Managing people, Ajit, can you give me? Okay, handling conflicts in teams, conflict management, okay. Developing others, okay. Can somebody give me a combination of two or three? Ravi? Ravi, can you give me two or three together? Decision making, negotiation skills, okay. So if you remember the challenges which we had listed out, base is that, could you come up with something? Okay, building an emotional connect, okay. Learning how to enhance problem solving. Okay, so I'm looking at competencies. So we will not look at sentences, we will look at only competencies. Give me competencies. Interpersonal skills, okay. Something more? Achievement orientation, yes, Jyoti. People management skills, yes, Nagendra. Anybody else? Communication, Hemant, yes, okay. Effective communication, problem solving, okay, Manu, that's nice. So uh, very well, most of it is in place over here. And what our own experience has, um, has analytical skills, yes, Ajit, that also. What our own experiences uh, have showed us is uh, some of it. Ravish, very well, planning and organizing. Let's see if what all you have mentioned is also something which is uh, figuring in on our list. People are human, as many of you would say. People skills, that is what we are looking at over here. Empowering others, uh, yes. Developing others, as one of you mentioned. 
Managing performance. Uh, this is one critical uh, skill which is required and a competency which is required over here with regard to managing performance. Uh, so probably that is something you would also like to add on your list. Our own experiences suggested that leveraging diversity is also one of the key competencies required, especially when you are doing uh, virtual, uh, you are handling virtual teams across continents and across geography. So I think this is one of the biggest uh, key competencies, if not the biggest, which we also need. Collaboration, again, the similar reason that in our day we have to keep pace with the global uh, you know, knowledge space, uh, especially with regard to the IT industry, the rate at which technology is advancing. We need to collaborate not just with people around here, but organizations and communities and networks all around. So collaboration is one of them. Building relationships, this is also one of them which we see is uh, a key competency for um, the first time managers. I have two more and see if that is uh, something which you also had thought about and that is influencing and the second and la last one is fostering open dialogue. Uh, what we have understood in our own experience over the period of time while dealing with uh, uh, the first time managers is that these are some of the key competencies that they are looking at. Yes, Ajit, team building as well, but that we are incorporating at a higher level when uh, first-time managers also come with considerable experience, about five to six years. So we are looking at building relationships when you're talking about team building. So this is uh, something which, uh, for instance, the first part I'm taking care of, when I said I'm proposing a com competency-based Approach. So here are some of the competences which I would have possibly tried to include in a first-time manager. Now I go a step next one and when I'm saying that these are some of the adult principles which I would have like to incorporate. So here are five principles which I would like to incorporate within such a program that I would be kind of carving for my people. So here is a list of five of them. First and foremost, adults have the need to know why they are learning something. I don't know if you recollect to what I said in the beginning that many times, uh, you know, we need to know why we are doing or why we are supposed to do something. The answer, what we are supposed to do, how we are supposed to do, is something that we as individuals, as grown-ups can figure out. But if we are given that mandate to do something, we very well have this desire that we are told why that is important for us to do. Okay, so that answer as to why, the reason as to why is more important when you're dealing with an adult. The next one which we are looking at is Adults bring more work-related experience into the learning situation, which you therefore need to keep in mind so you cannot really start with very fundamentals for them. They already have work-related issues. So whenever you are going to have a training program, it has to be a notch higher than that. Uh, apart from that, it also has to accommodate the idea that when you are giving them the training, you have to allow them to participate and share their experience. You cannot tell them, you know, this is what I'm going to tell them. So the banking concept will not work over here. Like I said earlier, they are co-participants, they are co-facilitators in most of this training session because they bring in experience, unlike children who have barely little experience and therefore they need to be told what they're supposed to be done, doing. Three, uh, this is something which I've seen in me. You would probably do a self-reflection yourself as well sometimes and you would realize that yes, if it is not going to take care of your immediate problem, if it is not going to take care of an immediate goal that you need to kind of complete, it is impossible for an adult learner to feel engaged in a particular activity or in a particular training session. So you need to make sure that most of it, your training program, uh, competency-based, the fact that it is competency-based will make sure that it is towards an immediate uh, but it is aimed at fulfillment of an immediate goal. Very well. Need concrete experiences to apply learning in real work. So like I said earlier, you need to have an engaging and experiential um, you know, uh, 
component in your training program simply because they are not the kind who are going to silently sit over there and passively receive. They need to be engaging on and off and they need to take this to their workplace so that part of, uh, you know, training which even if they fail, even if the trial goes wrong, they are okay with that. Okay, lastly and most importantly, it is about feedback. I don't know if you personally have also the desire that if you have undergone a training, then you have made a certain demonstration over a period of time. You would want to hear how is it that you have done and how is it that you will probably develop the person further. So the need for feedback is also very essential. So make sure that this part is taken care of. Now I'm moving to the third important part, and that is creating that learning environment. Now here you will see that I have distinguished between two kinds of sessions. I'm sure many of you might be aware of this, but this is how the third component fits in. So my competencies are in place, my principles are in place, and now this is the execution part. My execution has to entail these elements, whether I'm doing a classroom-based intervention or I'm doing an online, something which we are doing right now. So many of you who are WebEx trained probably would know that these are some of the ways in which you will be creating an engaging experience. And therefore, post that, there is an application uh, opportunity also that you need to provide them. So how do you do this? There are different ways in doing it, but at, since we are already on the WebEx and this is the context for us, we will see that there are several kinds of options for us. We can have simulation, we can have video-based learning, and most importantly, uh, the way the world is going now, creating e-learning nuggets. Uh, sometimes in the form of checklists and sometimes uh, in the form of toolkits. So I will just give you a glimpse of uh, this whole uh, approach and I want now all of you to pay attention to what I'm going to show you. And now you will have to answer three questions to me, okay? So here is an activity. Here, all, uh, all on your keyboards right now once again, I'm going to display a particular uh, toolkit for you, uh, a checklist, sorry, for you. And now you'll have to name the competency and the adult learning principle used over here, okay? So here is it. You can take about 40 seconds to look at it, check all the questions, and then give me the answer. So each of you in your chat response will give me two answers. One, it will tell me the competencies and the competency. It is a single competency. One competency that I have highlighted here and the adult principle used over here. We'll take it forward from there. You have one minute over here. Okay. You can recollect the competencies which I mentioned to you earlier. Decision making and experiential learning, okay. Subramaniam, people are human, okay. Which is the principle, uh, Vidya, that I'm using? You can type that also for me if possible. Komal is saying people are human. Managing performance, okay, Komal. <laughs> so two competencies you are saying, okay. Okay. Naeem is saying building relationship, uh, developing others. Okay, very well, Jyoti. Which is the principle that, that I have used over here, if you can sense that. Anthony, building relation, managing performance. Okay. Okay. Using one competency which is predominant, only one competency which is predominant. Collaboration. <laughs> okay. Very well, so here is my answer to you, uh, planning and on linking to real life problems. Yes, I will give it, empowering others. Okay, Komal, you get it right, at least uh, for the first part of the competencies that is being used. And the first one definitely is the competency which I've used over here is empowering others. Why is it empowering others? If you will check for each of these questions, it is all about helping people to, you know, be on their own, being independent, 
uh, you are genuinely the first one for instance is you are genuinely interested in you know the welfare of your team you are making available the resources that is required by them you are also making sure by giving these resources that you do not do micromanagement which is also part of empowering others so if you will check out all the questions it is all about letting your team become independent yet at the same time not hampering the performance that they are doing without all the micromanagement that you would have required to do so this is a this is a set of questions which we are looking at when we are talking about empowering others now look at this checklist we we probably uh, could use it uh, i have given you for for the two columns over here one is a yes or a no and then an, an action point so as a principle of uh, adult learning principle that i have used over here is i'm helping them use their concrete experience and apply their learning so what i'm doing over here by giving them these two empty columns in this particular checklist i'm asking them you can answer a yes or a no so for anything which is a no i'm expecting them to think further ahead and then write an action point which they could possibly give to mend that particular situation so here you are saying that i'm taking care of the competency i'm taking care of the adult principle and am i taking care of uh, creating an engaging and uh, experiential uh, learning intervention absolutely because here suppose it was a webex uh, situation then i would have had something kind of uh, sorry an e learning kind of a module i would have used a drag and a drop option or you know created a possibility where they could type their uh, you know action plan and things such as those so this is just to give you a glimpse about uh, uh, what all could possibly be done in a competency based approach taking care of all the three characteristics which i mentioned earlier so this is uh, a, a very brief introduction of course there is so much more but uh, here are some of the benefits for a competency based approach just in case if you are planning one and uh, uh you know making sure that you know your fdms are not left without uh, any kind of training during their transition so the first thing uh, that you need to uh, do is uh, by doing competency based approach is making sure that you know you are uh, taking care of the fact that it is best to bend a branch to bend a twig rather than a branch this is very proverbial you would know that it is easier to bend the twig than bend the branch so when you catch this people young when you catch this people as soon as they have entered the road it is easier to mold them it is easier to kind of you know help them pick up the required skills uh it is effective uh, why is it effective because as of now they've just entered into a role they would not be in that state of mind where they have their biases around the team member they have a bias around the system so they are very open minded and willing to learn so it could be very very effective if you would just at that point in time uh, make this intervention of training you are also ensuring by giving them this timely training of competency based uh, approach is simply that you know you will be avoiding costs uh, costly mistakes now what happens is because that person is responsible for an entire team now if the person if the first time manager herself or himself is not really equipped chances are the entire team is going to fail if the team is going to fail of course the entire project is you know set up for a failure definitely an organization at that point in time is not really keen to have that kind of a mistake uh, um, ready to endure that kind of a mistake so it is best to avoid those challenges and avoid those costly mistakes you provide them training right in the beginning and uh, the biggest direct uh, advantage of uh, focusing on fdm training as of now seems to be that you will definitely have an increased pool of qualified fdm who will be obviously uh, have an increased sense of morale and therefore the productivity as well will be um, exceptional Uh, would you agree that it is uh, something which can help employee uh, retention yes many times there are uh, there are individuals within the organization who would love to feel valued one of the ways in which they feel valued is how much of investment is the organization doing on them are they really wanting him to or her to you know, develop herself is there something which you know whereby they are upskilling 
they may definitely affect the bottom line but the fact that you are not ignoring them the fact that you are making sure that there is an developmental upskilling that is happening over a regular point in time that shows them that you know you are interested in them you are investing in therefore that is the kind of feeling with which they would like to continue that this is an organization that values me so that was for the organization can we also look at some of the benefits for the ftm himself or herself so here are listed some of them which are very self evident and which i uh, leave it for you to kind of take a look at uh, right from uh, getting a direction as to what this learning requires uh, sometimes they may know that okay i need to do this i need to do that and uh, yes i mean i will take up your question uh, because this is almost the last slide mm -hmm. so uh, increase in efficiency increase in consistency increase in the kind of way they communicate with their team and their senior manager and being able to effectively and efficiently being able to delegate i think one of the biggest challenges which we have understood in terms of is uh, delegating so when we are doing a competency such as empowering others we kind of try to do a mindset change in this particular competency and while designing this program that there is this kind of a comfort where an individual feels of not micromanaging but feeling confident of empowering others so that he or she can effectively delegate so this is uh, by and large the this is not an exhaustive list of course this is just an indicative list for you that these are some of the uh, you know benefits for an fdm person itself so this has been a very short brief uh, sneak peek into what the competency based approach is what are the challenges it addresses and therefore what all could possibly go into it and effectively what are the benefits that uh, uh, an organization can stand to benefit uh, can derive from and the individual can derive from so this has been a session and uh, which highlights all these points i hope it was uh, engaging enough for you and of course uh, you will take it forward to your organization as well so thank you for such a lovely audience that you have been and uh, over to purva and amit we will take up your questions right thank you so much rashi that has been absolutely insightful we have a thank couple you. of uh, questions here so the first question pooja wants to know uh, how to develop leadership skills in first time managers how to develop leadership skills uh pooja if you are trying to differentiate between people skills and leadership skills <coughs> excuse me uh, well there could be part of it where i'm looking at uh, strategic thinking skills or uh, business building skills which probably might be at a later level uh, which is during the trans post the transition phase is over Uh, i'm looking at first time managers who have newly adopted this particular uh, uh, role so as at that point in time i would possibly be only concentrating on some of these competences which i have mentioned moving forward over a year or so probably yes definitely leadership skills would be required and that is if i'm thinking of succession planning then my competences would change then there would be strategic thinking and business building skills and uh, you know um, execution excellence those will be the skills that uh, and competences that i would be looking at right so uh, rajshri talking about competencies pooja also is asking that how do we um, assess lack of competencies in uh, first time managers okay how do you assess lack of competencies yes probably a pre assessment uh, kind of an option could be adopted over here uh, in the sense that pre assessment could be either in terms of uh, an intense uh, that is my take on it an intense interview where you would possibly have a one on one with the newly appointed first time manager sit with him or her and understand what are some of the fears and challenges he or she is uh, likely to expect uh, or else uh, if not that there could be several other ways in terms of using uh, 
uh, what would I say, some kind of a feedback taken from others after the transition has been made and probably people around the particular group would say that, okay, these are some of the things this particular FTM could develop further on. So I would see these as a pre-assessment and a feedback um, from reportees and peers. Probably that could be one of the ways in gathering a lack of competencies. Right. Thanks, uh, Rajshri. So, uh, another question that we have from Sumit Roy. He says that, do you think assessments matter in self-development post-training? Can you please repeat the question? Do, do? do you think assessments matter in self-development post-training? Yes, of course they do. Because, uh, uh, like I mentioned earlier, if you are driving a competency-based approach, you want to see a needle movement. You want to see if what you thought about the first-time manager's uh, the job requirement is specific, specifically with required to, uh, uh, sorry, with relationship to, uh, uh, you know, people management skills and communication skills. You would definitely want to see how the person is progressing, whether the person is progressing, and what to do if the person is not progressing. Uh, only assessments would really be, uh, you know, relevant over here to give you that kind of inputs. So they are a big yes, yes, from my side, uh, in order to see if there is a legal movement. Right. Thanks, Rashi. That was, I'm sure that was, that was very helpful. So, uh, Sumit yes. says that um, he has, uh, they have been training uh, first-time managers on functional and behavioral aspects, but still okay. um, they feel the engagement is less. So, can you please what suggest some... What is less? Uh, the engagement is less. The engagement is less. Okay. Yeah. So, so what can is you the question? Yeah. So can you please suggest some assignments that they can give to engage and develop their first time managers? Okay. So what could possibly be done? Uh, <laughs> this is a very, uh, what would I say, a very uh, interesting question, suggestion. Uh, can I ask somebody in the in the uh, audience if somebody could be given the mic or something like that? If they have tried something, because one is being prescriptive, so coming from my side would be a little prescriptive. I want to understand if somebody has already tried something, where you know a training program has not yielded the kind of results. So what is the intervention that they would have made? Anybody? If Purva, I am allowed to do that. Sure, Rashi. I'm sure uh, the audience can reply over the chat tab that we have. Okay, so uh, somebody of you from the chat uh, could reply uh, to this particular question because I find it particularly interesting uh, right, because I'm looking at from a designer's perspective. I want to look from uh, people who would have tried and tested something. Somebody in the group who could say what could be done to yield more engagement from, uh, from the uh, participant. Okay, I'm hoping somebody's typing. <laughs> okay, uh, typically what uh, we would usually also find that um, the way to probably, you know, involve intervention, okay, so somebody, Ajit has given interventions at regular intervals such as a case study. Uh, yes. Um, what we have also experimented, like Ajit has pointed out, is that you do not do a download of all these requirements at any given point in time. We have something, uh, and we probably also advocate this whole idea, that there is something called a learning journey. It is not a learning session. We call it a learning journey. So what happens, uh, you, because there is so much of a download every time, uh, people get disengaged. There is so much of information overflow. So what do we do? And it is also known in the learning parlance, it is called as chunking. The entire idea of a particular module is chunked into smaller session, is branched into further session, and create a learning. So something which is, of course, people would want it here and now, finish it right now. But what we do is understanding the adult's uh, orientation towards learning. It has to be piece by piece. You cannot just say, okay, here it is and finish it. 
So as Ajit is also pointing out, we we also advocate the whole idea that learning has to be a journey rather than a here and now case, finish it, do with it, and you are done for the rest of the year. We do not uh, propagate that idea as well. So maybe this is something which could be, uh, you know, adopted as well at other organizations. Right. Thanks, Rajni. We have a lot of um, re responses on our chat chats as well. So uh, okay. another question that Rajni wants to uh, ask is that uh, they have a lot of first-time managers who uh, who were working great when individual later wants asked to handle team quality of work and motivation towards work that has drastically uh, decreased. So what can HR do as an as a team along with first-time manager when they're suffering? Okay, um, typically a one way to understand, uh, I always take a philosophical approach at the first level itself and for me, it, and I think for many of you out there, uh, it makes sense to understand that the root cause is very important. Motivation has happened, lack of motivation has happened because of what? Uh, suddenly, is the pressure too much? Is it uh, the fact that uh, the uh, work-life balance has got disturbed? Is it the case that uh, the job in somewhere is not very exciting? Those kind of things. Now, if many of you would have uh, read something called uh, the concept of the flow uh, or the stratified uh, theory, the, the theory of uh, stratified, I'm forgetting the full uh, concept, but it is a concept where if the competency is high, but the nature of the job is very low, the person is most likely to get frustrated and disappointed. But if my, uh, you know, skill level, uh, if my skill levels are low, but the expectation from the job is high, I may feel absolutely frustrated. So you have to understand where their competency level is and what is their ability to perform that task. So these are two things which you will probably need to map first in order to kind of take any kind of intervention further. So in terms of what is the required competence for the work and what is the competence that the person is able to project. These are the, these are the kind of alignments that you need to look at before you kind of, you know, make any further intervention to uh, motivate them. Yes, Ajit, thank you for saying the same thing. Yes, uh, identify the causes of lack of motivation, yes. Right, thanks, Ashri. So, um, uh, going on to our next question. So, you spoke of uh, uh, creating a safe learning environment for first-time managers. That will depend yes. on their managers. So Faith is yes. asking that how is it easy to control that? Easy to control? Um, I think a lot of uh, effort, therefore, will need to go into how you will design those kind of situations where the person can feel safe in terms of, you know, making a mistake. For instance, many times uh, if you are uh, on an e-learning module, for instance, uh, because we also are into the designing part of it, we see that when I am giving a question to the learner, and this is all happening online, okay? So if I'm giving a question to a learner, there are certain options, there is a certain uh, way to kind of navigate through the question. So what happens, not many learners are able to quickly get the answer right. So what happens is the way we kind of enhance their, you know, interest in this is by saying, sorry, you could not get this right for the first time. Would you like it right the next time? Try the next time. These are some dialogue box statements which we use in order to create a safe learning environment for the learner, especially on an online case uh, situation. So I think ease comes from the fact that how creative you are in designing your entire training intervention, whether it is online or whether it is offline, and that is classroom-based. Okay. So, uh, Rajshri, uh, Nagendra wants to know that while they promote, uh, so while they promote an employee to a first-time manager, do you feel they already have most of the required skills as they would be put through uh, projects to assess their leadership skills and then decisions will be taken to promote to first-time managers? 
that was a long question i'm sorry can you repeat again yes so uh, he is asking that while they promote an employee to a first time manager uh, do you hmm. feel they already have most of the required skills as they would be put through projects to assess their leadership skills and then decisions will be taken to promote the first time managers um i think this might be a very context specific uh, possibility because many organizations might have a kind of uh, uh, path laid out in terms of uh, you know training their uh, what would i say training their employees over a period of time before bringing them and assigning them to the role of a first time manager i totally agree uh, that it could be a thing that some of them do have the necessary skills not all of them need uh the kind of uh, competency based training that i mentioned over here so yes i do think that it is possible that some of them may have the required skills but those might be far and in between uh because nowadays uh, given the kind of uh, you know organizational structure that we have given the fact that everything is becoming flatter becoming uh, more obvious there is very less hierarchical structure as of now so i think in some cases it might be in some recent you know past decade organization uh, i doubt if the uh, first time managers would have been equipped with the required skill that is my take at least Well, thanks, Rajshri. So uh, we have a lot of questions coming our way, but because we don't have a lot of time, I'm going to ask you one last question. That's from Vidya. Yes. Uh, that how would you determine the dura uh, duration for developing a first-time manager? Yes, I think that is an earlier question which is also posted on the uh, chat, and I think uh, uh, what we have experienced uh, here is that one of the uh, most uh, workable option for uh, working with first time managers is the fact that you chunk your learnings you kind of do it as a journey rather than you know do it as a one time session uh, it shouldn't be like it's a, you know uh, one time affair it has to be a relationship between the lnd department and the uh, you know uh, first time managers that this is an ongoing journey you cannot uh, sporadically say okay now you know it's that time of the year that you need to undergo training uh, not like that but a very systematic approach to doing the intervention regularly and uh, Uh, yes ajit yes you are saying micro learning that is what we are hinting at make it a journey don't make it a sporadic intervention thank you so much rashi that was absolutely insightful and we had a very good time so uh, yes. with this question and answer session we are going to wrap up today's webinar once again we yes. thank today's webinar partner northscape finally a special thank thanks to rashri a speaker for this webinar for her time and invaluable information that she has shared with us today and i would like to thank everybody in the webinar audience for participating in today's presentation we will come back to you with many more with that it concludes today's webcast thank you and have a great day you too thanks purva